I'm Jerry Agar in for Ezra Levant this week. On January 24th, another meeting will take place between the federal government and Canada's First Nations leaders. Why? What will be different this time? 130 years of history with the Indian Act has produced nothing but misery. As Sun News contributor Monty Solberg has wisely stated, the Indian Act has aided in destroying more lives than any other single piece of Canadian legislation. Justice and basic human decency demand that it be dismantled before another generation grows up on its truly perverse watch. Many Aboriginal leaders with high-paying jobs at stake will oppose it. But 130 years of evidence is in, and the Indian Act stands convicted. So with 13 decades to back us up, let's try to agree on a framework for the discussion. Point number one. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. And point number two. If the people you rely on to solve your problem are not only failing to do so, but in fact may be a large part of the problem, you may have to take matters into your own hands. Can we agree on those two points? Let's apply them to Attawapiskat, the Ontario Reserve that for decades has been an appalling place to live and to raise children. To the first point, nothing seems to change year after year, but few seem willing to do something different, like move off the reserve, get a good education, and go where the jobs are. To claim that the residents of Attawapiskat should not have to do so, it's true. But missing the point, which is point number one, it's insanity to expect a different result. To the second point, if the government cared to solve the problem, they would have solved it by now. So we're back to point number one. Ontario's unemployment rate is 7.9%. Saskatchewan's is 5%. Several reports list Attawapiskat's rate at 60%, although the Toronto Star recently claimed 90%. It's safe to say you won't get a job on the reserve, but you have a decent chance of eventually finding one elsewhere. Additionally, the schools are better off the reserve. What's a caring parent to do? Sean Atleo, the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, says that he's confident that the problems in Attawapiskat will provide an impetus to make solutions in re a reality. I hope so. But Atleo goes on to say that he hopes Canadians who have pressed for relief in third world locales like Haiti and Africa will push for similar actions in their own backyard. Atleo means well, and is perhaps right, to be mystified by Canadians caring about Haiti while seeming to be unaware or uncaring regarding suffering on the reserve. But the people of Haiti can't go anywhere. The government of Haiti is failed and has no money. No one is forced to live on the reserve, and decades of pumping money into the communities has proven that we can't spend our way out of this problem. Brent Wesley is news director for Whataway News in Sioux Lookout, which includes Attawapiskat First Nation in its coverage area. His recent column accused people asking questions such as mine as racist. Yet he told me that getting an education is the key to getting out of the community and try to better your own life. Well, that being the case, I asked, uh, my questions are wrong. He answered with a non-answer, saying that the people there feel a heartfelt connection to the land. Well, no doubt that's true. But feelings won't feed an educator child. Actions will. Roughly $90 million in federal spending has been pumped into Attawapiskat since 2006, a tiny community of 1,500 people, yet the community is a disaster. Wesley takes exception to accusations against Native leadership. He wrote, well, frankly, the community does know what it's doing. It has stable leadership. Well, huh, that's a relief, with an unemployment rate of nearly everybody. Kids dropping out of school as early as grade five and a third world infrastructure, we can all be delighted they're not being run by incompetence. Look, I can tell you from personal experience that it is difficult, it's heartbreaking and terrifying to tear a family away from friends, relatives and homeland to secure employment. I don't take lightly the challenge, far greater than mine, for natives to go boldly forward into a new place, a new way of life. To live among what they may feel will be a hostile population. Life changed drastically for natives hundreds of years ago, and many injustices were done. It's easy to blame others. But that was then, and there's no do-over on history. 57% of natives no longer live on the reserve. They've paved the way. The government is nothing but a roadblock. 
Perpetuating the status quo consigns children to continue to grow up uneducated, poorly housed, depressed, and ill-prepared to raise their own children. Leaders and commentators will continue to cry racist whenever someone suggests radical personal action and change. The government will continue to say they care, but fail to do so. What is a responsible, caring parent to do? Stop exposing your children to failure and misery. Stop thinking things will change at the hands of others. Do not believe, as Sean Leo seems to want to do, that the 131st year of the Indian Act is the year the government will finally come through for you. That's insanity. Stop believing Indian leaders have the answers, or that all of them care to have the answers. They have failed for 130 years as well. Parents on the reserve have the power to walk away from the devastation, from uncaring, incompetent government and failure. Stop wallowing in victimhood. There is opportunity in this land of plenty. There is good education for your children, better than on the reserve. There's a chance at employment, and there are social services in place to help make the transition. Save yourself. I cannot, and the government will not. Monty Solberg is right to claim that the Indian Act should be dismantled. But a dreamer to think it will be. But it can be destroyed from within, so to speak, by simply walking away from it in your personal life. Try something different. Because at some point, the problem is not everyone else. It's you.